Hello and welcome back to the land of Seeker, and we have just leveled up, and uh, I guess that is actually due to us being in the land of the banished and attacking all of those demons and so on and so forth, so we probably gained a pretty decent amount of experience doing that, and I think what I would like to do is get Warlord, that's going to give me 30% increased influence gain, and as we continue onward now, without the story, bear that in mind, we do need to start thinking about the core gameplay of Bannerlord and how we can improve our chances of being able to achieve victory in almost every single possible situation. In other words, you know, charming enemy vassals, if we, if we can do that even, trying to defeat them on the fields of battle, capturing various fiefs, and so on. So, you know, all the standard stuff. Anyway... Meaningful favors is generally always what I will take because relations with powerful settlement NPCs improve over time, as well as, of course, the 10% better chance for double persuasion success. That is just incredibly good, in my opinion. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm thinking I might try to increase my athletics. I think that could be very, very useful. Although I'm thinking maybe one-handed or polearm could also be much better as well. I'm going to go for vigor and polearm here, I think, for this particular one. And I'm at this random town in the middle of nowhere. I was actually on my way back to my settlement because I, I want to recruit some custom troops. There's actually a very cool thing that you can do with custom troops that um, I was told about in the comments um, a couple of episodes back. And, um, yeah, it's actually kind of amazing. Um, I, I'll talk about that if I remember to uh, when we get there. But you could probably just go back and you can see the you can see the comment. I mean, you know, anyone can see that. So, yeah, enter the land of the banished. That's exactly what I want to do right now. I think, am I still injured? No, I'm not injured. Okay, phew. Okay, I was a bit worried there for a second. Anyway, I'm very much hoping that I will be able to snipe. Yeah, there we go. That was a nice snipe. And maybe we can get some easy... Oh, wow, that was really bad. Oh, that guy actually survived? Are you serious? Okay, wait a minute. What is What is actually happening right here? Oh, okay. I see how it is, guys. I see how it is. Wow, okay. They literally just... Okay, I... I have... I have no words, alright? I have no words whatsoever as to why that was actually so incredibly punishing. I really have no idea. Anyway, we're going to go all the way back to our settlement. And I'm going to try, if I can, to put people in my garrison because that comment about the custom troops also talks about being able to have unlimited um, unlimited capacity in your garrison in the settlement now i actually didn't find that i actually found that uh, there was a limit of 10 or 20 or however much it is uh, the maximum size for it but maybe I was just doing it wrong. Well, I don't know. Maybe there was something that I didn't do that actually does um, allow you to to have unlimited amounts of people in there. So that would actually be really, really nice, by the way. And I'm actually thinking maybe we should do a tournament right here. There are seven. Oh. <sighs> you know what? Let's do it. Let's try it, shall we? Let's try it. I feel like, I mean, the, the mount is not that useful. I mean, it could be kind of useful for me. And we're going to be dealing with some of our own forces here as well. But we do have a number of nobles too. So let's just see how it goes. I have a spear. Oh, wow. They really know how to absolutely murder me before we have even begun. Yeah. Spears are my worst nightmare. Absolutely loathe them in every single way. Especially when I'm on foot. I really do not like fighting with spears on foot. I find them very, very difficult to handle. Thankfully, I have picked up this fellow's axe, and I now should be able to use it without too many... Oh, see, now that's the damage I want to see. 61 damage to the shoulder of our opponent right there. Very, very nice. Now, if I can just deal some damage to this fellow before my red team member actually dies, that would be nice. There we go. Yeah, bear in mind that these guys are going to have significantly more HP than the standard unit that you're going to see in the base game. So obviously these guys are going to be a little bit more, a little bit trickier to take care of. 
Gonna actually use my Shield Bash a little bit here as well. Seems like Shield Bash actually works quite well against these units, surprisingly enough. Usually Shield Bash for me is not that useful, so I'm very, very pleased to see that it actually does do something here. So, quite happy with that. And there you go. That was actually much easier than anticipated. Very, very good. Anyway. Oh. Oh, dear. Yes. Another one. Okay. Uh, I would like to eliminate the guy on the horse, if at all possible. Oh, my... My, my, my guy just went in there. <laughs> he just went in there, and now he is literally dead. Okay. Th this is not going to go well. Can you help me? Yes. Just kill him. Kill him, please. Yes, yes. More damage, more damage, please. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. Now, please, let me pick up this axe. Oh, wow. Zhi Yi is absolutely murdering every single person so far. Very impressed with her. I am super surprised that she was actually able to deal that much. Wow, she just got a triple kill, I believe. That was very impressive. All right, well, we're starting to get basically no money for my bets any further. That's uh, that's actually something that I usually tend to increase whenever I have, you know, a mod like uh, Chaos's Tweaks or something like that. I generally tend to increase the betting amount because it just, it makes, it makes sense in my opinion. It makes sense to actually have a decent amount that you're going to get for actually winning one of these tournaments instead of it being just a side thing that you don't really get a huge amount of reward for. And it feels a little bit... Mm, it doesn't feel as satisfying to actually achieve victory when you don't get rewarded for it that much. But obviously it very much depends because sometimes you're going to get a, an amazing weapon and other times you're not. Like for example now I'm just going to be getting a camel so it's not that useful but it's still decent, you know? It's still, still pretty good. Anyway, there we are. Not too bad. Was able to achieve victory actually really easily. I'm super surprised, to be honest. I was 100% expecting myself to really not have a very easy time at all. But apparently I showed them somehow. I don't even know how that was possible, but there you go. Anyway, we are almost back to our home. And I can then uh, show you the, um, the funny funny little um, little tidbit of information which I mean you could consider it an exploit really you could consider it an exploit or you could just take advantage of the game mechanics present in the mod whatever you want to call it um, it's actually pretty pretty fun and uh, in my opinion if I if you know that's the thing if I wasn't doing a series I'd probably do it myself in my in my uh, free time because I, I think that kind of thing is actually really funny and uh, it's cool to kind of test these kinds of things out it's a, it's a lot of fun anyway let's just go over here to the settlement and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about here so um i didn't realize this okay so i didn't realize this at the very start that you could actually recruit any tier of unit all right so for example you can literally click on tier six units right here and it's going to cost me three thousand five hundred and i can get one of these and I had no idea that you could do that. I really had no no clue. So now, technically, what you could do, and this is this was mentioned in the comment, as I say. Um, so technically, what you could do is you could change this guy's armor and weapons and his horse and all that stuff to basically be nothing. You could you could basically give him the worst possible gear ever. And then you could recruit him for 100 dinars, 200 dinars, 300 dinars, something like that. And then he only has a small amount of experience to gain until he becomes the tier 6 unit. And you can upgrade from tier 5 to tier 6 for literally no money at all. But he's going to be gaining this amazing gear instead of the gear that a tier 1 unit would usually be wearing. You know what I mean? So that's, that's actually really kind of funny and really amusing. So it basically saves you a huge amount of money. And it is very broken, as as the person that left the comment said. It is indeed very, very broken. And um, I, I personally am not going to use that strategy. It is obviously perfectly fine if you want to use it yourself. I'm not going to stop you. And I think it generally is a lot of fun to see that kind of thing happen. But obviously, um, yeah, for this series, I will not, I will not be doing that. But um, look at this. 
We have a massive amount of wood, stone, and food. I am super, super pleased about this. I'm actually wondering whether I should go for more of this or whether I should go for... I'm thinking food, actually. Let's go for some food, and there we go. Okay, yeah, so that's actually going to be really nice. That's going to be done within 24 hours, and my custom troops... I obviously want to recruit some additional custom troops, so sh can I... Uh, oh, I can actually... Re oh, yeah, I can recruit potatoes, actually. Hmm. Maybe that would be, um, maybe that would make sense. So technically what I could do is I could do 33 of these guys and then we have 33 of them. So there you go. That cost me 4,500 dinars, which is actually quite expensive. And I'm actually wondering if I can actually put in unlimited amounts of people. Oh, it seems like I can actually put unlimited amounts of people. I had no idea that that was the case. Yes, yeah, so you see... You see me playing by the rules, I play by the rules, and everyone else is just breaking them and having a whale of a time doing it, and I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing? I am an absolute imbecile, I don't know. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so we're just going to run around with these guys, and I, I guess I might as well take some of these fellows as well, and we'll just level up our potatoes a little bit. <laughs> that sounds extremely hilarious. Um, yeah, so that's exactly what we're going to do, and in the meantime, my settlement is going to be gaining... Um, going to be gaining resources and so on, and we can do, ah, uh, yes, perfect, okay, caravan ambush. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this task, and then I'm going to send a message to the leader or to one of the vassals from this faction, and I'm going to say, hey, do you uh, do you need a mercenary? You know, and we're just going to become a mercenary of this faction. And we'll see how that goes. Because for me personally, I think that would be quite fun. I, I think I would actually have a little bit of extra money as well. Which would be very welcome at this point, considering. And we're just going to do, uh, you know, just a standard... Oh, I didn't want them to stop, thank you very much. We're just going to tell them into auto-resolve. Uh, you know, not not auto-resolve, auto-delegate. We're just going to tell them to auto-delegate... I'm going to try and get a couple of kills, maybe with my pole arm. I did just spec in a pole arm, so it might make sense for me to actually use that for once, right? Nice. Look at that damage. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And maybe we could actually get a little bit more here. Yes. It's a bit difficult, you know. It's a bit difficult to actually get kills when the enemy is actually on mounts as well. It makes a pretty big difference. Maybe I can... Can I, can I swing around here? Oh, donkey, you're getting in my way. <laughs> you see that donkey right there? He was like, no, you're not killing my friend. And I was like, no, no, I, I must. I must I must eliminate your friend. I'm sorry. And then he'll say, that's my friend's name. He was Shrek. Yep. <laughs> uh, that just dawned on me that, that that could have possibly been a reference. Okay, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the last killing blow on that fellow either. But it seems like we are indeed going to achieve victory relatively easily. And uh, yeah, I'm actually really pleased that we did pick up a bunch of really cool companions. That's actually, again, why this mod very much reminds me of... Um, oh, yeah, oh yeah, it also reminds me of 108 Heroes as well. 108 Heroes is another... Another mod that is inspired by... Um, I actually don't know whether the Land of Seeker is actually inspired by uh, Chinese mythology or anything like that. But I know that 108 Heroes is based on the uh, the Water Margin. I think that's what it's called. Water Margin, the book. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember. It's it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, okay. It's been a while since I've, since I've played that mod. But it is very cool. I, I love that mod as well. It has a wide variety of different game mechanics implemented in it. And I believe it is also made by a, a Chinese modding team. And um, yeah, I don't know what it is, but whenever I play something that is made by a Chinese modding team, there are, uh, well, there's one mod in particular that is probably my favorite warband mod of all time, or one of my favorite warband mods of all time. And it's made by... A Chinese modding team and I'm actually wondering because it's very similar in its structure to the way that this one is I'm wondering whether some of them actually worked on the same on the same mod maybe they did maybe they didn't I'm not entirely sure but whatever the case I am I, I am very much enjoying this very much okay so wait a minute wait a minute oh hello there thank you very much for the horses oh yes 
Yes, I'm glad we caught up with you when we did. Thank you very much. There's 1400. Great. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Lamoka right here. And I'm going to take a look and see. I don't really care who I'm going to speak to. So I'm just going to send a message. Can't send a messenger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that I don't have. I don't have that. Um, yeah. I don't have that here. Okay, that's actually a little disappointing, I gotta say. That is a little bit disappointing. Okay, well, uh, decrease my armor weight, I guess, so I can run around a little bit faster. And we're gonna go into the land of the... Oh, we can't actually go into the land of the banished just yet. All right, well, my bracelet is going to be recharged, I think, quite soon. Ah, oh, this is the leader of the faction. Didn't really want to speak to him, but I guess I'm gonna speak to him. I'm gonna say I'd like to enter your service. Uh, my sword is yours for the right price. Okay, 140 whenever you defeat a party of enemies or for any other significant deed. Okay, 140. I think that's pretty okay. It's not amazing, but I kind of want to work with these guys anyway, so that's what we're gonna go for. And um, okay, so let's actually just take a quick look. I actually really like the colors that they're using as well. I like the fact that the opacity is quite a bit different to how it usually is because now I can clearly see who is actually um, who is actually my ally um, and who isn't I mean obviously it's pretty obvious usually but most of the time I have difficulties actually seeing who the um, who the allied forces are so I mean that's obviously just my my own problem it's not no one else's problem but I do have a problem with that generally my eyesight is not the best but uh, yeah, anyway, there we go. Let's get some more of those guys. All right, so now let's actually make our way over. I actually would like to uh, clear out this hideout. Do I want to clear out the hideout, actually? Oh, Blood Lotus Revenge Legion. Okay, wait a minute. Does that guy actually want to want to fight these guys? Whoa, there's a huge amount of bandits around here. This is actually super nice. If only we could have gotten them into a battle with more people. That is really, really sad. Oh, well, never mind, never mind. Okay, we're just going to continue leveling these forces up, trying to make sure that they are the best they possibly can be. Unfortunately, couldn't get a really good task here either. Okay, well, I think the best thing that I can pro probably do is just fight some bandits along the way. I would have liked to have gotten into a battle with a much larger party. Not the, not the Revenge Legion, please. But I'd like to get into a battle with some people a little bit more, a little bit more powerful. Not 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 a massive amount, but just a little bit. That would make things a slight bit easier for me, because then I could gain some more influence. I could get some more money as a result of that too. Seven hundred and fifteen for that. Not too bad. And I don't think my bracelet is charged up just yet, so I'm not going to be heading in to the land of the banished just yet. I would like to head in there once again. Now that I'm a bit more prepared mentally, because obviously I was uh, I was thinking it was going to be relatively similar to the first time that I went in, where I would be not beset upon by many, many units from all around me. Um, but now that I know that that's possibly going to be the case every single time now, I will be a little bit more prepared for that so yeah hopefully i'll be able to do it anyway resource castle oh wait a minute hello there oh wandering yep 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 we decided to reward him there we go clan renown plus five happy with that and where where is this where is this guy actually going i'd like to fight with him in a large scale battle we could get some really really good um really good renown gains and influence gains from doing that or we could just head into enemy territory and fight our very own enemy vassals that might make more sense what do you think well i'm not entirely sure but what i do know is that while i'm doing this my settlement is just gaining and gaining and gaining resources over time and that's exactly what we want okay come on then Let's, let's just get over there. There we go. Oh, we made peace with them now. Oh, that is absolutely hilarious, isn't it? <sighs> oh, what a classic. 
Oh well, never mind. I will go over to the nearest possible um, war area. Unfortunately, war exhaustion is not actually shown in the mod. I mean, obviously, by default, I, I believe it isn't. Usually, it is a part of the diplomacy mod that I usually have installed. So, of course, we do not see that at this time. But, um, yeah, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll declare war against some other people, or we can maybe take someone out a little bit closer to their... Oh, this is the Vlansten Ice Domain. Uh, a little bit closer to their own territory. There we go. The power of the bracelet has now recovered and we can enter the state of banishment. Ooh, hello there, Tyliana. Hello, Tyliana. Ooh, yes. I think we could probably... I think we could probably do something here. Hmm. Can we... Can we fight? Can we fight? Uh, okay, Whew. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a bit worried about this, to be fair. I am a bit worried about this, so let's see what we can do. Do I need to level up first? No, I'm at 124 in bow skill, pretty good. And uh, let's go in, in, there we go, all right. So this is our first battle against a vassal, and hopefully we're going to do all right. It very much depends on, the. well, I think the environment, I think the environment is the thing that is probably going to, determine our success here if we are able to get ourselves uh oh it's just okay it's a standard valley all right that is actually fine i think we should be good here um we should probably put darian with the cavalry and wow lotus has yeah as we know lotus doesn't really have anything amazing there and i, I suppose melethvon will just be Actually, it makes no sense for me to be here. I think Melethphon should probably be the um, the commander for the archers because she's on she's on foot, so it makes sense, right? So that's what we're gonna do, and then we'll just do a nice little auto delegate. And uh, actually, you know what? Auto delegate? Nah, that doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't make sense. So we're just gonna leave our forces all the way over there, and I will try to deal some damage to the enemy and get some good gains get some good skill gains or not as the case may be because i am apparently so incredibly inaccurate that i'm not really able to do much wow what, what is it what's actually going on here okay there we go thank you <laughs> uh that was that was a little bit um uh a little bit funny all right oh wow i, I can't believe i actually hit that guy that's for sure Okay, hitting this guy in the face. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is problematic now. The fact that they are actually going into the uh, well into the forest into the tree line here is making things a little bit more difficult than I would have liked. But they're coming. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Twenty-one damage. Are you serious right now? That has to be one of the worst hits that I have ever seen from. A, uh, a swing from a pole arm like this. I mean, really, that was very, very fast, I thought. I thought I had really good speed, but apparently I must have lost speed at the very end or something like that. Maybe that was the reason. But whatever the case, I guess the best thing I can do now is tell everyone to charge in. I think we have a pretty good shot of actually achieving victory, even if we just charge. Wow, it seems like some of these guys actually have insanely good armor on, because I did nine damage to that guy. With a full a full swing. That was a full swing. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I'm just hitting him wrong. Don't really know. Mm, yeah, it, it could be just speed. Could be just speed in general. Because you can see there, 63 damage. And that was with a pretty decent hit to the shoulder. So if I had hit his head, probably would have made more of a difference. But... We were able to achieve victory very easily. Wow, that was actually exceptionally easy. I am... Well, I, I guess I, I probably shouldn't be that surprised. But yeah, there we go. We are now clan tier 2. Very nice to see that. And I'm wondering whether we should let her go or not. Is she actually married? Because we could potentially... Oh no, she's actually pregnant. Okay, so she is definitely married. Yep, there we go. All right, so yeah, unfortunate, because I was thinking, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll, um, you know, maybe I'll try and court a, a lady from uh, an opposing faction or something like that. You know, that could have been kind of fun, but yeah, uh, I think I will probably let her go. I don't think I really need the cash super badly, 
So we're just going to let her go, gain some relation here and there, and look at how many potatoes leveled up. Oh my. Now the question is, what are they leveling up into? Well, we know that they're leveling up into turnips, but I was going to make a food joke. And I was going to say they're leveling up into potato salad. Indeed. I know. I know. All right. So wait a minute. Oh, this faction literally just took their last available thief. And if this was, if they had, um, uh, if this was diplomacy, if diplomacy was installed right now, then they would make peace almost in instantaneously because they've lost all their thieves. But obviously they don't because they, well, there's no diplomacy. So this is going to be really interesting. Okay, increase your damage with bows by 8% and troops in your formation gain 5% damage with bows. That's can, uh, mm, that could be really, really useful. Um, yeah, we're probably going to be doing that. So strong bows, that's 8% additional damage. Very nice. And now we need to take a little bit of a look at these fellows as well. Shangjing. Okay, uh, we could potentially attack here. I'm I'm going to uh, pursue them a little bit just to see what I could do. Maybe I can catch up to one of them and not get the other one in a battle potentially. I don't really want to get both of them if at all possible. That would be a little bit too much. Don't really want to, you know, bite off more than I can chew here because facing a defeat at this point would be very bad. I would very much appreciate not having a defeat this early on. I mean, technically, eh, I mean, it's not it's not that early on, I suppose, but yeah, technically I would not not be very appreciative of that. Anyway, uh, I think I can probably sell all of this stuff. There we go. And we can probably sell all of this as well. Yeah, I don't think I really need that. Okay, there we go. 4,500. Very nice indeed. And did I sell my prisoners? Yes, I did. Already did that. Okay, so let me actually just take a quick look. Can I catch up to this guy? Yes, I can. And I can actually cut him off. That is perfect. Okay, this is... Ooh, now this is this is actually really tasty. <laughs> he says, looking at names of vegetables. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I probably should have called them something a bit tastier, shouldn't I? Something like, I don't know. What's tasty? Uh, what do you find tasty? I don't know. Anything. Anything like that. It, you know, something. Donuts. I don't know. Donuts and whatever else is tasty. I don't know. Anyway, let's try to attack this guy and not think of donuts as we do. His name shall shall forever be Donuts. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine literally us being the ruler of our own faction and having the, um, what is it now, the Distinguished Service mod installed and then calling a regular unit who has been in numerous battles and calling a regular unit into our, into our court and basically saying to them, I dub thee Sir Donuts. Yes. And then, and then the guy just looks at us like, what? What are you, what are you even talking about? Why, 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 why are you calling me Sir Donuts? That makes no sense whatsoever. My name's Jeff, you know? <laughs> so his name is now Sir, Sir Jeff Donuts. But obviously we would just say no, just, just for, forego the Jeff. It's just Donuts. That's it. So yeah, Everyone I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, targets. but you get it. You know, you know, you know, right? That would just be such a ridiculous situation to be in for that poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. Uh, and he gets, he gets promoted to a companion and then all of a sudden he thinks, Oh yes, I'm moving up in the world. And then he's like, Oh yeah, Sir Donuts. Oh. Then he has a very straight face for sure. Uh, yes. Oh well. Never mind. Let me see if I can actually do some damage with my bow this time around. Because last time I was not that effective with it. And I was actually kind of disappointed by my performance. So let me see if I can do a little bit better this time. Nice. That was a nice headshot. Uh, these guys actually have some pretty significant shields as well. So it is a bit difficult to deal with them. Uh, can I? Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. These guys do need to be assaulted a little bit just a little bit of harassment right there make sure that they don't take too much time reloading make sure that they uh, get interrupted as much as possible not really doing a very good job of that to be fair uh, yeah you know if Sir Donuts was here he'd do a much better job than I that's for sure but it seems like we have achieved victory I'm, I'm super surprised still I really don't need I, 
I don't understand how we are able to uh, win against these guys so easily. I guess it is literally just because they were a rebel faction and they didn't really have great amount of access to, well, pretty much any kind of funding. They had very little amounts of funding because they only had one town to their name and I think one village. So that would kind of make sense, right? I think that would probably be the reason why. And uh, yeah, well, whatever the case, there we go. I'm going to let this guy go as well. We're basically just going to try and make friends in almost every single place that we can. And then we will um, make some choices later on down the line where we can maybe make the best of it. Oh, hello there. Oh, yes. I will be wearing that helmet. And I'm already using one of these horses. Don't need anything else here, I don't think, but I am going to be looting the rest of it nevertheless. There we go. And uh, now there's actually another vassal that I can see in the distance here. There's actually a number of them that would be fantastic for us to attack. I am... Uh, I'm very eager to get them into some battles here, but, uh, well, they probably would prefer that I didn't. Mm, should I level up my charm skill? Charm skill is actually pretty good. Could be useful. Is it, though? Is it useful? Eh, not that useful. I'd actually like to increase my leadership skill, if anything, because... I have said this time and time again that getting to 100 and taking Famous Commander is one of the best things that you can do early on in the game. And so I'm actually going to spec a couple of points into that just so that I can get my focus all the way up to, um, to 100 right there. And uh, obviously we are not able to field armies just yet. I'm not able to call for an army as a mercenary. As you can see here, mercenaries cannot gather armies. So obviously that's not going to work. But uh, okay, yeah, this guy, you decide to give him some food and water. That's what I'm going to do. Lon oh, Lonely Wanderers joined my, my party? Oh, we got... Oh, it's just one one pagan fellow. All right. Uh, I mean, he's okay. He's got some pretty decent polearm skill, that's for sure. But everything else is not so great. Mm, not a big fan of that. But we have enough space, as you can see, in our in our party as it is. So doesn't i don't really see any reason not to keep him around i guess but it would definitely be a little better to have some more of our custom units in here so i am probably going to be swinging around and see if i can get to my settlement in the meantime i'm actually not wanting to fight this guy in the night time so i'm just gonna wait a little bit there we go and now Let's see, uh, let's just attack him, there we go. Um, I leveled everyone up, didn't I? Yes, I think I did level everyone up. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so every single time we do one of these fights, it is giving me an opportunity to level up every single one of my skills. <laughs> How effective that is, that's obviously up to me and my prowess with every single one of these different weapons. Obviously, I think it would probably be pretty good for me to level up my one-handed skill, because my one-handed skill is definitely one of the things that I could very much fall back on in the state of the Banished, in the land of the Banished. And that would definitely be something that I would like to be a bit better at, to be honest. So I'm thinking maybe I'll... Um, if they get out of such an entrenched position, I might try to use my sword a little bit. Because the sword is actually pretty good on horseback, surprisingly. So, I would like to do that. If at all possible. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have slowed down. Shouldn't have slowed down. I knew it. You know that? I knew that. As soon as I, as soon as I slowed down, I thought to myself, wait a minute. I'm in a very vulnerable position here. And I wasn't wrong. I wasn't wrong about that. Uh, oh, well, never mind. The AI actually took some really, really good steps right here, by the way. And I'm talking about the enemy AI, of course, because they basically just stayed here on this raised ground. That was their... That was basically perfect positioning for them. And I gotta, I gotta definitely applaud them on that, because they really made the most of every single bit of advantage that they could possibly get. Because if they didn't do that, they were going to have some pretty big issues even attempting to defeat us at that point. So, yeah. Anyway, I am pretty close by to my settlement. So, I'm going to just head on over there. 
And then we'll recruit some more custom units. Oh, look at this. We're actually starting to get an, a lot of money now, too. Not bad. Yeah, look at that. Okay, yeah. So this is a bit problematic as well. Ooh. You decide to mediate the quarrel. You invite the soldiers to have a big meal. Oh, the soldiers feel very happy. Okay, good. Anyway. I'm going to need to go back for many reasons. But the problem is... My wages. My wages are a pretty significant issue. What's this? A courier with marriage for Lotus. Oh, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello there. Do you accept? Sure. I have no idea who this guy is. But who am I to say no, right? I mean, surely she can say whether she wants to or not. I, I don't know. But uh, whatever the case, there you go. All right, so <laughs> this is actually kind of amazing. We, um, we do need to actually go and get Amaliana, by the way, because I, I can't just send a messenger and then do the, you know, uh, bring hero into party shortcut. I can't just do that. So I'm going to need to find where this is and go to, um, go to that place in my off-screen time so that we can actually retrieve our... Uh, our family members, spouses, I suppose you could call them, which is actually quite um, quite interesting in itself. But um, yeah, that's going to be very, very cool to see as well, because I'm pretty sure a number of them have some amazing gear, and I might be able to um, <clears throat> borrow it. I mean, uh, yes, ste I mean, steal, I mean, borrow it. Yes, indeed. Borrow all their wonderful, wonderful armor. So hopefully I'll be able to do something like that. And you can see here that we're actually almost at 400 once again. So I'll be able to get quarry level 2 or market level 2. I obviously don't really know how effective that's going to be either way. But yeah, anyway, we're just going to heal ourselves a little bit. And I'd also like to do a little bit of sorting with my... Um, oh, we actually have one eggplant. Wow, that's pretty cool. All right, I'm really, really pleased to see that we have one eggplant already. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of sorting in my off-screen time, and I will probably try to earn a lot of money. So what I'll try to do is maybe I'll run around with a slightly smaller party and just fight a bunch of bandits so that we can be as fast as possible, obviously. And from that, I will try to earn enough money to be able to build an enterprise. And I'm very much hoping that that will... Um, hopefully assuage a couple of our wages and maybe make things a little bit easier for us to afford. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.